Hi, welcome to Monday Evening Live. We're so glad you're here. Um, welcome to Stephanie Griffin Ministries. I'm Stephanie Griffin. We're happy to have you. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and like the video and share it with somebody you might like. I'm going to introduce our guest here who really need no introduction. And that is Eric Wilson from Isaiah Ministries and from the documentary um, in Enter the Dragon. Is that right? Dragon Revealed. Dragon Revealed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. And Ivan Raj from Yoga Unboxed. Amen. So we're happy um, that they're here this evening. And uh, we have a fun subject we're going to talk about. A lot of fun. It's very interesting, the things that unfolded as we were putting this together. And we're excited to share with you the things yeah. that we've learned. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So put your comments in the box. Any questions? Anything you you want to bring forward that we haven't brought forward at some point, put it in there. We want to hear from you and let us know where you are when you're watching. All right. Well, um, let's get started. We'll start with the first video. Now, remember in the wake of the G20 summit to be held in the national capital, there are really many highlights, but there is one that clearly stands out. It's a 28 feet tall bronze statue of Nataraja that stands at the entrance of the G20 venue in Delhi. This towering statue of Nataraja, the tallest uh, in the world, symbolizes Lord Shiva as the Lord of Dance and his cosmic power of creation and destruction. Here's a special report on the Nataraj statue. The national capital is decked up for the power-packed G20 summit. A massive beautification drive has been undertaken by the civic authorities over the last few months, further enhancing the grandeur of the historic city of Delhi. Apart from the cleanliness drives, art pieces and several eye-catching water fountains are put up. World's tallest Natraja statue stands at the entrance of the convention hall at the Bharat Mandapam, the venue of the upcoming G20 summit in Delhi. It took a special green corridor and support of several states to bring the 27-foot tall Natraja single caste statue from Swami Malai in Tamil Nadu's Tanjavur to Delhi. The Ashtadhatu statue is truly one of its kind, made using the traditional sculpting technique, the lost wax casting method of the Chola period. Around 82% of copper, 15% bronze and 3% lead, along with small amounts of gold, silver, tin and mercury were utilized. Weighing 19 tons, the statue was built over a period of six craftsmen. Oh. Well, I don't know what happened. I thought it was over. Um, I'm not sure where that ended. How about that? Well, let's talk about, we've seen a ton of symbolism. Anybody you, want to start? You know, can I interject something, Stephanie? Yes. Do you know what caught my attention even more than the statue? At the very opening of that clip, they had a... I want you, like a marquee, like a digital, you know, sign mm -hmm. for the G20 summit this year. And it said one earth, one family, one future. And that for me, that's just startling because that tells you what everything involved with this. That's the goal. It's true. It tells you right there where they're headed. And then it. You know, it shocked me because it was only Friday when this started that I even saw, you know, those video clips. And when I saw it, I was like, why do they have a statue of Shiva in front of the G20 conference? And, you know, and then, you know, when I mentioned that to you and then you were like, we need to talk to Raj. I was like, I need to talk to Raj because that's that's interesting. Yeah, it was it was a little shocking to see that so big and they're making a statement right raj what do you say yes uh hi stephanie I mean, Ivan, and... sorry <laughs> that's okay that's okay so 
uh, it was basically published in a in a news uh, uh, paper, a magazine, online magazine also that. Uh, it was a statement um, that India is making to the world that it is a symbol that is the Nataraja statue, which is uh, the word Nata means uh, dance or music or art. Nataraja, actually dance, drama or music, Nata. Raja means Lord or God. So Nataraja statue is actually uh, a statue of a Shiva. Uh, it is the uh, Nataraja is a form of Shiva. <clears throat> and they said it is a symbol of India's intent to reshape the global order. Mm. In other words, you know what, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I no, 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 that's okay. In other words, uh, it is to, as they say, new world order. Uh, so this is this symbolizes India's intent to reshape the global order. Mm-hmm. Do you know what's interesting is is like what you just talked about with that that symbol of Shiva as the Nataraj. It's the symbol of Lord of the Dance, and you think, okay, what does dancing have to do with the New World Order? What does dancing have to do with anything? But the dance that they're actually talking about, that same symbol is used in different forms in Buddhism and Taoism as the Yin and Yang. It's the dance between destruction and creation between light and darkness between good and evil and it's it's almost like okay um like when i was in the martial arts they told us that the Tao is symbolized as the yin and yang and that yin and yang the light and darkness have to be combined in order for you to have what they call god this pantheistic god but the Bible tells us God is light and in him is no darkness mm -hmm. at all. He doesn't mm -hmm. need destruction in order to create. When he created the earth, you know, in the first six days and he rested on the seventh, there was no destruction. Destruction came because of our sin, not mm -hmm. because of God. God does not destroy in order to create. Mm -hmm. Good point. Very good point. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> coming back to the, the, the statue itself, it, it represents the apocalypse and the creation. This, as uh, uh, Eric mentioned, uh, creation and destruction, because uh, Shiva is called as the destroyer. So there are like three main gods in Hinduism. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu is the organizer, and Shiva is the destroyer. So... <clears throat> We have a destroyer in the Bible as well. Mm. Abaddon in Revelation. When think, true. When I think about Shiva's process, right? Destruction and then creation, it's the opposite in the Bible. God created, but he's going mm -hmm. to destroy in the end. And then he'll recreate a new earth, but he's got to cleanse the earth first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I found this really good video right at the very end today. Um, it talks about Shiva, and I thought I'd bring it forward as soon as I can see it. Here we go. Shiva is a major Hindu deity and is the destroyer god or transformer among the three Murti, the Hindu trinity of the primary aspects of the divine. God Shiva is a yogi, knows everything that happens in the world and is the main aspect of life. Yet one with great power, he lives the life of a sage at Mount Kailash. In images, he is represented as a handsome young man, immersed in deep meditation or dancing with Pandava upon Amasmara, the demon of ignorance, in his manifestation of Natraja, the lord of the dance, goodness, humility, and every good quality a human should have. Generally, when depicted, Shiva wears a deer in the left upper arm. He has a trident in the right lower arm, which is his emblem of sovereignty, with a crescent moon on his head. The moon symbolizes the time cycle from the beginning to the end. He is said to be fair like camphor. He has fire and the maru and malu or a kind of weapon. He wears five serpents as ornaments, a garland of skulls and is pressing with his feet the demon Mayulaka. He faces the southern direction. 
The attributes of Shiva include Shiva is often depicted with a third eye with which he burnt desire to ashes called Priyambakam. He smears his body with ashes which is in reference to an epithet where he is an inhabitant of the cremation ground. His blue throat is with reference to a story in which he drank the poison churned up from the world ocean. The sacred Ganga river flows from the matted hair of Shiva which in turn represents the nectar of immortality. He is often shown seated upon a tiger skin, an indication of the belief that he has conquered lust. A small drum shaped like an hourglass depicts his famous dancing representation. Nandi is the name of the bull that serves as Shiva's mound. His association with cattle is the reason he is known as Pashupati or Lord of Animals. The Ganas are attendants of Shiva and live in Kailash. They are often referred to as ghostly hosts and are often invoked to intercede with the Lord on behalf of the devotee. Mount Kailash in the Himalaya is conceived as resembling a linga representing the center of the universe is his traditional abode. Varanasi is considered as a city specially loved by Shiva and is one of the holiest places of pilgrimage in India. Apart from the anthropomorphic images of Shiva, he is worshipped in the form of a lingam, a vertical rounded column. The Shiva Linga is regarded as a symbol of the great god of the universe who is all auspicious. Mahashivratri is a festival celebrated every year on the 13th night or the 14th day of the new moon in the Krishna Paksha of the month of Megha in the Hindu calendar. It marks the night when Lord Shiva performed the Tandava and is also believed to have married the goddess Parvati. The 12 Jyotirlinga temples are the most prominent of all the subcontinent temples in the name of Lord Shiva. I'm having technical difficulties here. That's okay. We can <laughs> we can handle it. Like you can. I don't know if I can change scenes. All right. Well, okay. There was a lot of symbolism there, and a lot of information. What did you see? What struck you? There's a lot of information there. Um, so generally, Hinduism teaches that. Uh, <clears throat> Or Hindus say that Shiva is the most complex of uh, the 300 uh, million deities. Uh, some Hindus believe that there are only 33 deities. Some believe only three, like the, like she said in the video, Trimurti. Uh, <clears throat> but um, he mentioned Linga, the word Linga, uh, showing a structure, a black uh, structure almost towards the end of the video. Mm -hmm. The word linga means mark. So when you look at it from an aerial view, and our viewers can take a, if you want to go to Google and search for linga aerial view, and then you go look for Vatican aerial oh, view. I've got that picture. It's, it's on the same. Scene. You'll see it. That's amazing. Can get to it. Yeah, I was shocked. I didn't really even know what the Shiva Linga was. I've only seen like the dancing Shiva or other variations of a personhood of Shiva. But mm -hmm. to see that just, I don't know, elongated object, yeah. it's like yeah. what in the world? Uh, yeah, it's actually a phallus. I thought that, I didn't want to say yeah. it, but okay, it makes sense. Wow, yeah, inside the and circle. That's, and that's what the symbol in the Vatican also is, the obelisk. It's a symbol, it's a phallic symbol. Okay, I did know that one. I should know that's that. That's the Washington the same, Monument, right? same thing. Yes. Yeah, and and it's not a circle. It's They, they, they say that it is a representation of the union between male and female. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is Shiva. Okay. Well, yeah, because Shiva has male and female attributes, right? Yes, yes, he's also androgynous, and uh, he has, uh, yes, he, <clears throat> so basically he taught yoga to a woman, that's what Hinduism teaches, and uh, certain Hindu gurus teach that he, uh, he was, sorry, his, his student was a woman, his first yoga student was a woman, and he taught yoga to her, and she learned yoga from him, and then they become they became one because she learned from him and she became one with him <clears throat> she yoga with, means yoked yeah she yoked yes correct 
Okay. So he absorbed himself. I mean, absorbed the woman to himself. So it's half uh, male and half uh, woman. So oh. she was Shakti means power. Okay. Shiva means, according to a certain a certain Hindu guru, Shiva means that which is not. That which doesn't exist, but he exists. People say he is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Mm. So when you look into Hinduism, when you look at Hinduism just with the with the Indian, so not in with the Bible or a Christian mindset, uh, you won't. It won't make any sense to you. And you yeah, there, there's definitely, you know, God is greater is all I'm going to say right now. Amen. So, sorry, finish what you were saying, Raj. Uh, Ivan, I have a friend named Raj. And so with your last name, Raj, I just want people to know that's where I'm messing up. <laughs> so. That's I'm fine with it. You can call me Ivan or Raja still. That's fine. Oh, thank you. You're very gracious. <laughs> so, no problem. <clears throat> so yeah, so he absorbed uh, the woman to himself. She they yoked, became one, and uh, so therefore half male and half female. Uh, Shiva Shakti. The male is Shiva. The female Shakti. Shakti means power, and Shiva, like I said, according to a certain Hin, Hin, uh, yoga guru, he, the, it means. The word Shiva means that which is not. And then I was saying that, uh, <clears throat> so when it comes to the Bible, right, when you open the Bible and we study the Bible, it tells us where we are. We are sinners. Point A. Point B is where we have to go to heaven through Jesus Christ. And the path to get to eternal life is listed it's given to us what is the way the way is jesus christ so he saves us from point mm -hmm. a and brings us to point b mm -hmm. right that's not how hinduism works so it is all about circling uh life death and then you reincarnate oh, and cycle cycle yeah cycle okay. yeah and then uh, when you ask, um, when you ask, uh, what is the meaning, like what is the purpose of life? There is no answer for that. I've asked Hindus, my Hindu friends, like I have very good Hindu friends. I really love my Hindu brothers and sisters and my friends. And so when you ask them or when I've asked them, like what is the purpose? Like in the Bible, when we ask, uh, when we ask the Lord, like what is the purpose? Man was created for God's glory. In Hinduism, there is no specific purpose per se. There's nothing like that. Hmm. There's no answer to the question. What is the purpose of life? Is it to become God when you're Hindu? So that is a certain school of Hinduism. There are two schools in Hinduism, right? So one is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you when we did our first film, a tape, but uh, so there are two paths in Hinduism. One is atheistic, one is theistic. And an atheistic part, the ultimate um, destination is to reach the guru, the master, Shiva. Mm. So Shiva is the Adi guru, the first guru, the first master. And you reach Shiva. Speaking of master, even in martial arts, I'm sure our brother Eric has done a lot of research. I know that he's done a lot of research uh, because he's lived uh, that, that lifestyle for many years. Um, and he, as he rightly has pointed out during all of his talks and his documentary, martial arts is rooted, indeed it is rooted in Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so they have a god uh, called uh, Parashuram, uh, who is the avatar of Vishnu. Avatar means uh, fallen or descended. That's the, that's the meaning of the word avatar, Sanskrit word, it came down from somewhere, came down from elsewhere. So uh, uh, Vishnu and and uh, however, there are texts in Hindu writings where it, uh, it says that uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, all three are one and the same. They are all the same. It's all Shiva. Yeah. Somebody in the chat said a counterfeit Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, Trinity. When you, you look at it. Do you know, Stephanie, it's interesting because 
you know, because my background was not, you know, like uh, Brother Ivan's, I was in the Buddhism and the Taoism, but that came from Hinduism. And what the Buddhists and the Taoists say is, is that yin and yang, which is the joining of light and darkness or male and female, just like Shiva is the union of male and female, light and darkness, Shiva and Shakti, um, divine masculine, divine feminine. It wasn't until after probably 20 years in the Chinese martial arts that it became really clear. It was revealed. When you see the yin and yang, they say this is male and female or light and darkness, just like Shiva. Mm -hmm. But then you start finding out male and female is actually yin and yang. What the, the root, the true understanding of that at the highest level is, is not man and woman. It's deity and humanity being joined and becoming one. Mm -hmm. The entire goal is to become one with this pantheistic God uh, called Brahman or called the Tao or called whatever you want to call it. You know, even within certain uh, Protestant churches, there were people that were promoting this, you know, 150, 200 years ago, a pantheistic view of what God is. Interesting. So, In spiritual formation, you had a, a, a light side and then you had a shadow self, a shadow side that light yeah. and darkness coexist and you wouldn't know one without the other. So it's the same kind of thing, but the Christianized package. Yeah. And of course I didn't know it at the time, but through contemplative prayer, it's becoming God. That's what you're doing. So it's no different than what you're talking about. <clears throat> and, and, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Go ahead. No, you know what the next thing is. So yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm going to try to move down the list my screen on the scenes went black and it's stuck. So I'm using my stream deck. So we're going to be surprised at every scene that comes up. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, okay. This is symbols that I saw in the videos um, that I thought I wanted to talk about. So we talked about Shiva in the top right. You can say more, whatever you'd like to say. The welcome sign, the lotus flower, Ivan, Maybe you can tell us what the lotus means. I do forget. And then right here in the bottom left, you see that all seeing eye mm -hmm. right in front of your face. And I don't know what the half dome thing is on the right, but they seem to focus on that a bit. So what do you say about those? Okay. So the lotus is definitely, it's obviously it's, it's a, it's a Hindu symbol and, um, it represents uh, enlightenment and uh, the hindus um, believe that there is a lotus in every human's heart mm. or every hindu's heart so it is a it is a hindu symbol and not only in hinduism but even in even in um, uh, buddhism lotus flower is uh, yeah. has a meaning yeah so it represents like prosperity and fertility and all that and in certain aspects, it also represents uh, sun, S-U-N. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. As far as the the circle, it's actually <clears throat> I can I can see why uh, you know people can think uh, or it is an all like an eye. Um, it actually represents a wheel, um, but now as I'm looking at it, it does look like an eye. You know, with these occult symbols, they're often double meanings. So yeah. they present one on the exterior and they mean something else uh, behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, true. But I couldn't figure out this dome, but they seem to really like it. I'm going to have to do some more research on that. I'm not familiar with that. Mm, I'm not either. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the... oh, go ahead. Yeah. I... No, no, I was just saying that I, I'm not e able to either. Um, uh, probably I'll, I'll take a look at it as well from other angles and we can decipher okay. and get information. Yeah. Back to the top left, 
one earth, one family, one future, what Eric brought out in the beginning. Um, we see that played out in their agenda. And I read the agenda, not the agenda, but the finished product of what they put out afterwards. I would say mm -hmm. I, I brushed over it. It's a lot of stuff. You really have to tease it out. You're going to have to. But I didn't have a lot of time. But in just kind of in a broad sweep, they are looking to make the earth more connected business-wise. And then, um, of course, the, the big keyword, the buzzword is sustainability. So, oh, I lost that scene. I don't know if you're going to see us very much. <laughs> so, um, sustainability, that it's in terms of, you know, cutting back fossil fuel. They, they didn't cut back all the fuel. They wanted 100% everything cut back. And they came in agreement to about 80%. And um, you can look that up. But they, what will this mean? I, I, I shudder to think what it's going to mean. But we're seeing some implications of it um, recently. And uh, anyway, so yeah, one earth. What did it say? One earth, one. One what? earth, one family, one future. One future. Okay, so that's the new world part together. Stephanie, can I interject something there? Please. Mm -hmm. And tell me to stop if this is something you want to save for later. Um, Fine. You know, we see the opening. You know, this is, you know, 20 of the most, probably most powerful financial um, entities in the world. And they're being brought together in order to unify our financial uh method of finances worldwide and like the g20 um it was originated the group was originated in 1999 but their first summit happened in 2008 which was during the financial crisis everybody remembers that mm -hmm. that was when they said we've got to come together to resolve to fix this this is not a this financial crisis that's happening if we don't come together to repair this and to fix this, the entire world's economy can collapse. And that, you know, there were many people that were saying this could put us back in the dark ages. So you see them bringing this together financially. And now with this year's summit, the, the main focus is on ecological, you know, the mm -hmm. climate change and, and oh, they were doing digital currency too. That was the other yeah. piece, digital currency. Yeah. yeah. So when we look at that and then you go, okay, why is this picture of Shiva there? What, you know, what is the connection? Because there's no way that these people, these people are in the highest echelons of government and of finance. And you don't get there unless you are members of some elite behind closed door societies, whether it be the club of Rome or, or whatever it is. So when I looked at it, I thought, okay, so what does Shiva have to do with this one world, you know, get together financially. And when I started looking to see, you can go all the way back to the days of George Bush senior and George Bush junior, mm -hmm. they, talked about the need for a new world order we do have a some new clips. way of the world being structured mm -hmm. and the only way to bring a new order in is to do away with the old and then the idea of shiva as the destroyer and the creator all of a sudden it made sense we've got to destroy the old world in order to build a new mm -hmm. So we're going to talk more about that. I have another symbol I wanted to bring forward. We'll see how many scenes we have to go through to get there. Um. Let me go forward one more. Okay, so this is the bull. This is a fountain at G20 that they showed in the advertisement of the G20. Yes. So we're seeing a bull, right? Mm. So what does that mean? When I thought about the bull, 
I thought about the Commonwealth Games and they had a bull. Did you see how red those eyes were initially? Yeah. Until he received worship and then he calmed mm -hmm. down. You know, it's funny. The beast, the bull, received worship from a woman. Mm. And in the Bible, the woman represents Christ's bride, the church. Mm -hmm. Good so point. the beast is angry until it gets the worship that it desires that's true and she's did you see the crystal that she had in her hand yeah that's like the cosmic christ that's a false light i didn't even think of that so there's so wow. much symbolism yeah so bull is the <clears throat> excuse me sacred vehicle of shiva so in Shiva temples, uh, there is always a bull facing Shiva. That's interesting. And some Hindus say, they publish these articles uh, on their internet, I mean, on their website, that it's it can be a bull or a calf. It's also androgynous. I mean, it, I'm sorry, gender um, fluid. And uh, <clears throat> so we can uh, think about what happened during the time of, you know, Moses, where they worshipped a golden calf. Yeah. You know, so and that is connected to Baal and uh, yes. Thing. And so the that name of the bull is actually Nandi. Nandi means uh, one who gives joy, and uh, <clears throat> so. When Hindus go to the Shiva temple, they believe you just have to whisper your prayer to the Nandi statue or the idol, and the prayers will transmit to Shiva. Interesting. Wow. So we have a counterfeit high priest and one who gives joy. And I'm going to show this um, definition, not definition, but I was looking at different places on the meaning of a bull, a symbol. It says tyranny and brutality. And in some places, it means death. So many ancient symbols connect the horns of the bull with the sun. So we're back to the sun. The motif is especially prevalent in ancient Egypt. However, global religions often share the connection between bulls and heat, fire, and sunlight. So that's one of them. Tyranny, and brutality, and sun. Oh, you can't really see this. Oh my. Okay, let me read it to you if I can. Oh, we'll just go here. <laughs> I don't know why that switched. We're not there yet. Hmm. Oh, well, this is interesting. It's changing everything. Wow. That scene totally went away. All right, let me increase my screen size. And I will read it to you, what it says. Maybe mine just went away. Well, this is interesting. Okay, I have my phone. Let me pull it up on my phone. 
because I picked these out because they were important. They all mean something. Yeah, every, and everything that is done in an event like this G20 summit, there's nothing left to chance. Mm -mm. Every flag, every symbol, everything is done with a specific intent. And whether the common people or even the middle people, whether they know about it or not, the people at the top do. They recognize what those symbols are there for. Yes. Okay, I have a praise report. My scenes suddenly came back. <laughs> praise so the let Lord. me go. Amen. Let me go here. And let me see. But the other one is gone. So I'm just going to read to you what it is. So the first one is, it's going to sound familiar because we just kind of mentioned that a minute ago. The bull symbol represents heaven and Babylonia and Syria with the god of storm riding on its back. In Egypt, it's a symbol of royalty and is sacrificed in religious rituals for millennia. Associated with the sun, fire, resurrection, earth, water, night, and even death. Since its blood is used in a sacrifice, it is associated with the death of winter and the return of spring. They are emblems of death, tyranny, ferocity, brutality, stubbornness, lust, and the devil. Now, in here you have sacrifice, you have royalty, uh, religious rituals. I mean, that's like a counterfeit, you know, Jesus being sacrificed. And then the very last part, very short, in India, Shiva's white ball stands for cosmic order. All right, so let's go to the last ball. Stephanie? Yeah. Do you know what's it's also interesting? Do you remember in the Bible, you know, all of this started at the Tower of Babel. And you had mm -hmm. you had a trinity there. You had Nimrod, who was supposed to be the god, and then you had Semiramis, which was the goddess mother, and then you had their son, which was Tammuz. Tammuz is connected symbolically almost always with the bull mm. i can't hear you eric oh wow. that was it did you hear what i said okay. about tamus and the bull yes yes yeah, that I was saw good. I was okay that's interesting that even back that far at the tower of babel and, and also in egypt the bull was was part of that Mm. That connection with deity. Mm -hmm. Yes. With false deity, I should say. Right. I have also, anything you want to say before? Yeah. Okay. I was saying that uh, the bull also uh, represents uh, meditation. Really? Yeah. Because the bull, they say, just sits. Of course, it'll just sit because it's an idol. It won't move, it is an object. Uh, but uh, they they say, look, it is just sitting still. Oh. And people say they feel vibration, a, a certain vibrations when they go near to that statue, and it calms them. Really. So it is called a meditative bull. Interesting. I've never That's heard right. that. Very interesting. Oh, we already did this one. Okay. Well, let's move into. Shiva at CERN. We've seen Shiva at G20. Um, now we're seeing it at CERN. And for those of you who don't know what CERN is, let's go here. The CERN Laboratory's Large Hadron Collider uses a 17-mile-long magnetically powered particle accelerator to fire protons at each other at almost the speed of light in the search for mysterious subatomic god particles. It is the largest machine ever built by mankind. A lot of people are starting to wonder whether CERN might be having an effect on the Earth's magnetic field and could be responsible for shutting it down. The experiments produce 600 million subatomic collisions every second, generating temperatures 100,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. The magnetic fields created inside the Large Hadron Collider 
are more than 100,000 times Earth's own magnetic field. Did you hear the part about they're wondering if this could create, like, I can't remember the word, but basically destruction of the Earth? Yeah, and then they talked about the God particle, which was, yeah, mm -hmm. that's terrifying. It is. Yeah. Do you have a, a image of uh, the Nataraja statue, like close up by any chance, Stephanie? Oh. If not, I, I have one. I can, uh, if I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I'm not good at that <laughs> yet. Okay, no problem. Um, let's see. And while you're looking there, Stephanie, it's it's interesting because at this Hydron Collider, which is in, I think, Switzerland at the mm -hmm. CERN um, mm -hmm. Nuclear Research, this, this cost billions of dollars to build this facility. This is a legitimate science um, experiment. And India donated this statue um, and you can look it up online. It's not in conspiracy theories. This is, it, I've got pictures of them actually receiving the statue, unveiling the statue from the delegates from India. Um, and you think, okay, why would they put the destroyer outside between these two buildings at this unbelievable, scary nuclear research facility? I mean, there's no way that's just by chance. Mm-mm. No, I agree, especially when part of its symbolism is destroyer. Yes, and there's a lot of scientists from around the world, different countries that work there at CERN, but many of the scientists, um, many of them are hopeful. They say we may be able to actually reproduce the Big Bang. We might find out who God is, and they're saying that it's this pantheistic energy but there's many of the scientists that don't even profess faith in the Bible or Jesus, but they are saying this is terrifying because we could open a doorway into an altered uh, universe or something. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could cause something that has got irreversible uh, consequences. Interesting. Well, the Bible tells us that if time weren't cut short, man would destroy himself. Yeah. And do you know, it, gonna, oh, go ahead. It, forgive me, just one more quick thing. This just came to my mind because of what Raj has said earlier. Um, the Bible talks about the fact that under the, the trumpets, the trumpet judgments mm -hmm. in Revelation chapter nine, it says um, that the fifth angel sounded and, he, and John saw a star fall from heaven and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit the abyss and it says that when he opened the bottomless pit there arose out of the pit a smoke as of a great furnace and the sun and air were darkened by reason of the of the smoke and then it talks about all these creatures coming out of this and this can be symbolic i'm not sure but it talks about these creatures this smoke coming out and it talks about tells you what they look like and then in verse 11, it says something really interesting. It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in Greek, he hath his name as Apollyon. Both those names in Greek and in Hebrew mean the destroyer. Mm. And then you've got oh. Shiva there, and you've got scientists saying, we might open a door that we can't close. How about that? Ivan, I'm bringing yes. a picture up now that you started to mention earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Hindus wow. believe Vatican uh, copied uh, Shiva Linga. Wow. I've never seen it from that angle. That I mean, that's striking. Yeah. I'd never heard this piece until I started looking and this popped up and I'm like, whoa, I had no idea. Just when you think you've heard it all. So Hidden in plain sight, right? These things are hidden in plain sight. We just have to yeah. have eyes to see. 
Yeah. All right, now, also at the Vatican, we have a world globe. Anybody want to say anything about this? Yes, that that is very interesting because they have an identical, almost identical globe at the UN, which is in our country, in the U.S. And if you look at the history of why this was developed, why this thing was created, this is actually a new world being brought out of the destruction of an old world. The new world is in the center, almost like um, like something hatching out of an egg. The old world has to be destroyed in order to bring the new world into being. So, why does the Vatican have that? I mean, that's you know, <laughs> that's scary. And then why, why does the UN also have one? And Who is there a connection one? between the UN and the Vatican? Oh, that's right. I forgot the UN had one. I would have yeah. loaded that up for comparison. Well, there's an agenda. Our viewers can, can go online and type that in. It's, it's, yeah. The signs are right in front of us. Christ has got to return or man's going to destroy the earth. Yeah, that's true. In so many we, ways. We know our Savior's about to return. He is. So let's talk about some of the things that people are saying, like Barbara Marks Hubbard. One fourth of humanity must be eliminated from the social body. We're in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. We are in charge of God's selection process. He selects, we destroy. We wow. are the riders of the pale horse death. Wow. Can you even, um, this is just, it's unbelievable. And this lady is, um, she's very it's, influential both in the new age as well as in the spiritual side of the UN. Let me, if you don't mind, um, let me, let me interject something right here. Sure. Um, we had a man years ago, his name was Robert Mueller, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners are familiar with his name. He was the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations. And let me just read, I'm just going to read a couple of statements that he said about the purpose of the UN. This is from a book that he did called New Genesis, page 122. The United Nations is much more than a political organization. It is a paradigm, the expression of a deep evolutionary change, which in the long run will transform the world for the best. And then he goes on and says on page 184, the supreme unity of the human family, universal, which is funny because that's what the word Catholic means in Latin. It means universal. Mm -hmm. He says the supreme unity of the human family, universal and interdependent, as seen by all great religions, must now become a political reality. The mm -hmm. hour has struck for the implementation of a spiritual vision of world affairs. He's talking about that's what the UN's purpose is, not simply a political but a spiritual change of the entire world. Yes. And we're seeing in that, seeing that now through Alice A. Bailey's 10 point plan that the UN adopted. It's really in our face, uh, in our faces right now. And she also says, she talks about the universal mind and mm -hmm. U is capitalized and M is capitalized. So that is, she's meaning Satan at that point. Lucifer. Like I haven't said that would be Shiva. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was Barbara. Let's see what Winston Churchill has to say. This is about crises. He says, never let a good crisis go to waste. These people love a good crisis and we're seeing a lot of their intended crises play it out these days. But he was a Freemason. The left yeah, is I his not induction that. ceremony. Wow. And then this is him to the right. Most of your leaders, the majority, not all, 
um, have Freemason uh, memberships or close attachments. So and the yoga was introduced to the U.S. by a Freemason. Who was? Yoga. The oh, yoga. you're right. That's yeah. true. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stephanie, if you can flip to Raj, I need to I need to oh, hear yeah. this. I've never okay. heard this. Um, flipping. Here we go. <laughs> Raj, share. I, I want to hear this. Sure, sure. So, <clears throat> so there was an Indian uh, guru who was initiated to become Freemason. His name is uh, his title is Swami. Swami means Guru or Lord. Also, uh, Swami Vivekananda. I'm familiar and, with him. Yeah. So he was an Indian Freemason. And that. actually, when people, uh, if you want, you can Google Swami uh, Vivekananda, like Vivek Ramaswamy, who's running for presidency, the same first name, Vivek. Uh, Vivek uh, means knowledge, I believe. Um, Swami Vivekananda, um, he introduced yoga. He, so he's a he's a Freemason. There are pictures of him in Freemason regalia, and there are Freemason lodges that have the, have his statue as a Freemason. Uh, Ivan, was he the one that was at the World Parliament of Religions back in the eighteen hundreds? Yes, in eighteen ninety. Oh wow! Yes. And he was promoting this same thing about bringing all the religions together. Yes. At the yes. World Parliament of Religions back, and that was in mm. I don't remember the year, it was 18 something, the late 1800s, to the best 1993. of my memory, early 19... 1893. Okay, in Chicago. I didn't realize he was a member of the Freemasons. Yeah, he was, he's a, he was a Freemason. Wow. Let's talk about, well, we'll do this and then we'll segue into uh, Freemason um, definition of something. So we have a CNBC op-ed that says a new world order is emerging and the world is not ready for it. So it says that my own answer to the panel question on our preparedness for the new world order was to quote Henry Kissinger, who else? In questioning the premise, no truly global world order has ever existed. Kissinger wrote in his book, World Order, what passes for order in our times, or time, was devised in Western Europe nearly four centuries ago at a peace conference in the German region of Westphalia and conducted without the involvement or even the awareness of most other continents or civilizations. Over the following centuries, its influence spread. With that as context, the question is not what the new world order would be, but rather if the U.S. and its allies can, through Ukraine, reverse the erosion of the past century's gains as a first step towards establishing the first truly global world order. Stephanie, what, what was the date on this article? I can... looked, oh, it's 2022, um, April 4, 2022. Look at what they said there. The question is rather if the U.S. and its allies can, through Ukraine, mm -hmm. reverse the... And do you know, because of what's happened with the war between Russia and Ukraine, look what that's done to the food uh, supplies mm -hmm. across most of the world. Mm -hmm. There's people in Africa right now that are, are starving because of what's happening in Ukraine. Oh. Well, we know God is ultimately in charge, but he has to let things play out. All right. So let's look at Freemasonry definition of order uh, cal. And that's Latin. And what it means is, is order out of chaos. So Eric, do you want to talk about this? You brought it forward. Well, and this, this comes back to what Brother Ivan was sharing about Shiva. There has to be destruction before there can be creation. So, and, and people can do their own research on this, but you can go back and watch interviews with many world leaders over the last 30 years, 
And like what you just quoted from Winston Churchill, they say we shouldn't let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, Fauci has said the same thing. Uh, Klaus Schwab has, sh has said the same thing. What, what they want us to believe is that the, the crisis was by an accident. Nobody had control over it, but we're going to use it. And that's an absolute lie. They create the crisis in order to offer the solution. And, you know, the, the Roman hierarchy, especially through the Jesuits, that's been their plan from the very beginning. The easiest yeah. way to create change is by causing a problem and then offering the solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the people will call for a solution and they'll be happy to take it. Yes. And then, then it's not like people can say, well, we were forced to do this. We actually are the ones that are crying out for it. And they just happen to have it already ready to offer. Right. Us. Yes. So, so we, this see, symbol, like, we oh. see in our world right now, we've got, it's like, if you read Matthew 24 and Luke 21, there is war like, like we've never seen over the last hundred years. There's never been war like we've seen in the last hundred years and, or go back 120 years. But not only the war, we're now seeing climate catastrophe. We're seeing natural disasters. We're seeing starvation. We're seeing epidemics of disease and, and outbreaks of, of plague-like, you know, things happening. Everything that the Lord Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 is happening. So with all of these bad things happening, Rome and the UN and those that are in the elite, they're going to have a solution of how to fix this. We've yes. all got to come together as one. One yes. people, one world, one religion. And that That's religion right. will be universal or Catholic. That's right. Yes. And that's not, yeah, forgive me, because we're not talking about Catholic people. There are many no. people within the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith that are serving God with all of their hearts. And many of them are living more righteous lives than many once Protestants. Mm -hmm. But the leadership at the top levels, they are the ones that are pulling the strings on what's happening. Yes. And the people are ignorant. Yes. And they want to keep them that way. Just like the symbol of the, um, that baby demon, was it Ivan, underneath Shiva's foot? Yes. Suppressing foot. knowledge. Yes. So in, underneath Shiva's foot, Shiva is actually uh, stamping that uh, so-called demon of ignorance. <clears throat> and uh, it's called as Apasmara. And uh, it is interesting that Shiva in the Nataraja statue um, that was set up at G20, actually, that is the most popular form of Shiva. Uh, if you go to any Indian restaurant, if it is a, especially if it's a Hindu owned Indian restaurant, you will see that Nataraja statue inside the restaurant. And you will see that Nataraja is. Uh, and you'll see the uh, form of Nataraja is actually half male and half female. Uh, the foot, the f uh, yeah, the foot that is stamping the demon that is actually the masculine side, and uh, the foot that is uh, lifted up is the feminine uh, uh, side of, of of Shiva. And uh, <laughs> brother Ivan, I'm glad you said that because when whenever I've seen that image of of that Shiva, you doing that dance. I've always thought the leg that is lifted up looks like a woman's leg. Hmm. And ne it never even dawned on me that that is intentional of why, because of the male and female union. Hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Wow. I have a videotape of Biden talking about the inflection point, I believe, in the world economy not just the world economy in the world it occurs every three or four generations as one of them, as the uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day 60 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946 
And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people dying, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it. And we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. So anyway, to me, that he talks about death and chaos. <laughs> What's he focusing on? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, these leaders do talk about the new world order. That is the intention. Only God knows, you know, his timing and how far he will allow them to go. But um, there are certain things that have to happen and things are in play. So, And we're seeing it in the agenda of the G20. We're seeing it in what they put out after the meeting. And they are serious about taking hold of the money and taking hold of your uh, freedom in terms of um, utilization of planet resources. They want to rein in those resources and take them away from you. So, Stephanie, you know, yes, something, um, something that is important for us as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ to remember. We need to know these things. I'm saying this for our viewers, too. We need to know these things are happening, but God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. If, if I have surrendered my life to the indwelling of Christ Jesus, whether I live or die is irrelevant. Every single morning when I wake up, I know God still has a mission for me. If it's one day, if it's a hundred days, if it's a hundred, if it's 10 years, if it's 20 years, only God decides when I die. Mm -hmm. Nobody can put me to death unless God says, okay, I'm done with, with Eric. And if he decides that, then I'm okay. Cause I know when I wake up, I'm going to see his face. So what mm -hmm. we have to do as Christians is we have to say, if I woke up this morning, I've got one reason to be alive, to love my family, and make sure they're ready for heaven and to reach out and try to share the gospel with every person that we know. Yes. The reason we look at prophecy and current events is just that, to kind of understand where we are. It validates yeah. the prophecies in the Bible and it creates an urgency of Amen. getting this message out so that other people won't have to be lost. Amen. Like two, Amen. two kingdoms being formed. One that the Freemasons want, the New World Order. They want to rebuild, you know, the Tower of Babel, a New World Order. God has his kingdom, and that's the kingdom that will be built. And so this stone represents Jesus. Amen. And his kingdom will come and take over. It will destroy every, anything that man wants to create. And he will be the victor, just like we can walk in victory when Amen. we stay close to Christ. He said, we have to hold fast that which we have and don't let anybody take our crowns, right? But we want to bring as many people with us as we can, yes. as long as time is The CERN Laboratory's Large Hadron Collider uses a 17 mile long right. magnetic that was yeah <laughs> sorry about that so as long as we have time probation hasn't closed that's what we're to be about nurturing our relationship with christ and reaching out to others amen bring them with us amen i want to read a text from psalm psalm 62 <laughs> verse 5 and 6. yes my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Amen. Mm -hmm. So amidst all of the chaos and the confusion, and we see that the powers are all coming together to set up things that are going to be against, that are going to be against God and God's command. And... Uh, <clears throat> As the psalmist wrote in um, Psalm 2, I believe, uh, where he wrote that uh, he saw in the vision the kings of the world, kings of the earth, came together against God. 
and you see there's no one and it's not it's exactly they have decided to cut the bonds from the anointed they want to sever themselves and they want to remove the uh, God, remove god's children from this earth so he is seen that in the vision and he wrote it and we see that happening that those prophecies being fulfilled are beginning to fulfill in our generation yes sir <clears throat> so we're going to see him coming in the clouds he will prevail very soon and joy in the chat says all other ground is shaking ground shaking sinking. sand sinking sand Sorry. <laughs> i need my glasses Not thank there. you joy thank you all for the comments these are great comments thanks for hanging with us with all the technical difficulty as well as uh, a slightly delayed start but it was worth it it was fun these things happen in a live now ivan I'm going yes. to show a flyer. Now you want you to tell people about this? Oh, yeah, sure. So this is an outreach conference. So we are organizing. Uh, it's called uh, <clears throat> the Battle for Your Frontal Lobe Science, quote unquote, science versus science. Uh, we actually organized a conference, uh, part one of Battle for Your Frontal Lobe, Fear Not, Fear God. We organized, we, we had that uh, this past um, April. And we invited uh, non-Adventists and even there were some non, non-Christians, a couple of non-Christians also. And uh, so this is a conference where we want to provide hope to people who are detransitioning, individuals who believe they made a mistake in transitioning their, their gender uh, through hormone blockers and through surgeries. Um, so they realize they made a mistake and they want to transition back to their original gender. Uh, obviously, because they've already gone through the surgeries, certain body parts cannot be regrown. And unfortunately, they have to live the rest of their lives that way. However, as Christians, we have to be there to provide hope to them and welcome into the family of Christ. So Amen. this conference will address that as one of the issues. And then we will be addressing creationism and then also uh, the so-called climate change agenda. And uh, it's uh, information about this conference is found at the wisdompearl.com. And uh, <clears throat> Chloe Cole, some of you might be familiar or, or you might have seen her on social media. Uh, where she is uh, discouraging individuals from transitioning and um, the issues that she, she's gone through. She, she shared all of the issues that she's gone through. Yes. No, no. Uh, Ariel, no, she's not an Adventist. Uh, however, uh, she is uh, seeking, and therefore we want to invite her to come and present. And, um, yeah, so, and then we also will be... Uh, Haley Wolf on the bottom, you'll see a young lady, Haley Wolf. She'll be presenting on uh, how Eastern meditation affects the hormones. And uh, we have Walt Cross who will be presenting on uh, how to balance our hormones through natural remedies or naturally. And um, Pastor Rick Coons is going to be presenting from Daniel, Daniel uh, prophecies, uh, especially regarding the communism and uh, how that is impacting gender issues as well today. And uh, Brother Brian Beavers will be talking about climate change agenda, but through the lens of Bible prophecies. And uh, Dr. Linda Royal will be presenting on uh, uh, a certain organization and it's tied up to the uh, gender transitioning agenda, or as they say, quote unquote, gender affirming. Will this be available online, uh, Ariel? Uh, we don't have uh, live streaming as of now, but we are discussing with an organization, uh, a non-Adventist or non, actually, yeah, it's a non-Adventist organization, but they are very interested to live stream this event for us, uh, but it's not sure yet, uh, but we will we will keep uh, Stephanie informed so that she can, she can inform her, her viewers. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's happening in Long Island, um, October 27th and 28th, the last Friday and Saturday of October. And uh, the registration information is uh, available at the website, wisdompearl.com. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, thank you. I'm excited for that. I wish I could attend. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be right there so close, but just timing is not working out. Um, if people want to donate towards this conference and help with expenses, how would they do that? Sure. So we are a nonprofit uh, organization, and uh, we have a donate button on the on the website, <clears throat> and um, people can uh, make their donations if they wish to, if they're impressed. And uh, Ariel, in terms of uh, yes, it will be professionally recorded for a later date. Uh, it will be on YouTube, and. Um, uh, actually, if you go to our YouTube page, uh, <clears throat> The Wisdom Pearl, you can actually watch the talks from our previous conference from this past April. And all of our the talks are already there on YouTube. You can you can watch them if you like. Um, yes, and we do need all the prayers possible. You guys can pray for the conference uh, in order for it to be um, successful in the sense because we are having a lot of... Um, people from all walks of life attending, uh, not just Adventists, but also Christians and Roman Catholics and Roman Catholic priests. Uh, they attended last time also, and they're going to attend this upcoming October conference. Mm -hmm. um, they're very interested. So, yeah. So pray for Ivan and for all of them as they're preparing for this event. We know that... Um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be hardships and attacks because of this. So, but we're looking forward to see seeing the presentations at some point. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Eric, and greater is He you? that is with you than He that is in this world. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you, Eric. What about you? Are you speaking anywhere? You want to tell people? Um, I just got back from Washington State at a camp meeting and Oregon from a camp meeting. And Ivan and I both were at 3ABN this past month. Um, I think I'm going to be local the rest of this month in October. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be speaking at some local meetings and I think two camp meetings in uh, Tennessee and North Carolina. And I, I really I'm, I'm hoping that I can be home for a little while because we've got a We've got a new documentary that we've been working on for over five years. Um, it's called The Arrival, An Overwhelming Surprise. So I would ask that that people please lift us in prayer for that. Um, you know, if they want to help financially with that, anything they can do, prayers most importantly. Um, the, the Arrival, An Overwhelming Surprise. It's about the second coming of Christ and how Satan's going to try to counterfeit it. Mm. That sounds exciting. Very good. If you want to donate to that, how would they do that? Um, if they go to isaiahministries.online, that's our website. Or if they go to our YouTube page, which is Isaiah Ministries, um, Eric Wilson. Either one of those two places, we have a donation uh, link that they can donate either through PayPal or credit card, or they can uh, you know, write a check or money order and just mail it to us, anything they'd like to do. Most importantly, we need prayers. I mean, Amen. like, we need prayers and faith. Claim promises for us every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. To the viewers who were here this evening, thank you for spending this evening with us. We appreciate thank you me. being here. You make it m so much more fun. And um, it's just nice to be interacting with you again. It's been a while. It's been too long. So I'm glad to see the people in the chat, all my friends and people I don't know yet. And uh, God bless you. And I hope this has yes. been uh, helpful to you and encouraging. And, and share this, share this, you know, mm -hmm. share the program once Stephanie gets it up online with you, everybody you can. Oh, sounds good. Eric, would you like to pray us out? Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Dear Father in heaven, all of us, our brothers and sisters that are watching right now, whether it be live or whether it be on YouTube, we come to you tonight, not as orphans, 
but as your sons and daughters, not because there's anything in us that's worthy, but because the worthiness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we lift each family that is represented here today and tonight, every family. Father, we confess our sins, our iniquities, and our transgressions, and those of our family, and we claim the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over every family represented. Father, you have promised us, Lord Jesus, you have promised us that you came to open the eyes of the blind, to turn us from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto thee. We ask that you will do this because you have promised and you cannot lie. Father, take back your throne of our hearts and reign inside of us, Lord Jesus, as King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. Please be with Brother Ivan Raj and be with Sister Stephanie Griffin and their families. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Until next time. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Raj. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Bye Raj. Bye, um, Eric. Thanks for being here.